millions, and I mean millions of dollars have been made by my man, Jared Chamberlain, a beautiful, bald-headed Canadian ginger. He is as close to my doppelganger as I can find in this industry. I feel like I need to put my glasses on just so we match Oh, a wee little not. bit. Look at that. You don't even need chat GPT for that intro, do you? Oh my Dang. gosh, isn't that handsome? Uh, that gang, is so this is good. Jared Chamberlain, uh, an incredible man I've known for about a decade. And now I get to <laughs> fangirl. I get to watch this guy crush <laughs> it by not buying a bunch of leads. And that's the mistake I've made as a team leader for far too long is I've bought so many leads. And Jared put that energy into earning business instead of buying business. And we're here to understand how he got there. Gang, my name's Eric Hatch. I'm with Hatch Broker by Real. I'm with Hatch Coaching. I am part-time male model, full-time beefcake. And I am here to tell you that uh, we're not selling you anything. But for those that are interested, those that do want to lean in, and if you're like, man, these are guys I want to partner with, or I want to grow with, or I want to mastermind with, or I want to coach with, like, all you got to do is reach out. There's no sales pitch, but we do have opportunities for those that want more of Jared or more of me. So with that being said, Jared, dude, what's it hey. like being the most handsome man in Calgary? Well, you'd have to ask others because I don't think I'm it. But according to my wife, I mean, she must think I am that, right? That's right. Uh, Jared, I want to, I want to cut right to it. Okay. I want yeah, to do it. I want to, I want to understand at such a great level of what you've built and why it's spectacular. Cause you and I, we first met at a mastermind probably 10 years ago, nine or 10 years ago. Yeah. And we were looking around the table and we were, um, mid-sized players in the game at that point yeah. and doing kind of what everybody else did. And we've gone on to build bigger, awesome things, but you've, you've pivoted different than what most do. And now you are reaping the benefits mightily. So, uh, unpack that whole story for yeah. our watchers here. Yeah. Uh, the, the first, I forgot to tell you about this. The first thing is, you know, the, the, the two pair of people that we were working with when we mm -hmm. met. Yep. One of them was at a YouTube conference that I was at a couple of weeks ago. And oh. it was it was great to see see one of them. The other one I was fine with not seeing. So it was good. <laughs> um so we yeah, like we have a a real estate business. Rebecca and myself uh is my wife, and we've been doing real estate since 2004, 2005. We come into 2009, we're gonna have kids. We're like, ooh, do we keep doing this the way we're doing it? We started leaning into growing into a team. And even at that point, I did start doing some videos and I'll share some examples of, of the progression of what we've done. Um, but we, we, we kind of dove into that, trying to figure it out. And I like a lot of people and I'm Canadian, I'm going to start there. So if I start saying like the way that the Americans do it versus Canada, I know Eric's as close as you can get to being Canadian without being Canadian. Cause he's so close to the border. And, you know, beautiful head and all. Um, but I think the the biggest thing is we've gone through a journey where we ripped off and duplicated so many different people and tried so many different ways. And coming into probably 2018, we realized that we had to do things our way. And so we stopped like, and this is this is not to like say stop coaching with Hatch, but we stopped doing any coaching with real estate people. Mm -hmm. And we started real business coaching. And it was a different shift because the typical and, and, and Eric and his crew is not like this, but the typical real estate coaching is very much like go buy leads, go chase down people. Um, but they always say one day people will be attracted to you if you keep doing this. And it's like, this is super exhausting. And it's super frustrating. And so um, do you want me to start sharing some more stuff? Like yeah, I got a uh, couple of things. Uh, I, I think in order to validate and, and to showcase, okay. we need to understand that you have, uh, you've created something now where you're not going where everybody else is going. You're doing yeah, your yeah, own thing, sure. your own path. And that has now manifested itself over time. Uh, I want to share this with you all. Um, give me just a second, because I think it is so fun to see what you have done. Um, this is Jared's YouTube page, uh, the Chamberlain Real Estate Group. Uh, so at Chamberlain Group, uh, over 12,000 subscribers, 615 videos. That doesn't happen overnight. No. And this blows me away, Jared, because uh, I take a look and er almost every single one of your titles has Calgary in it. Like there's no, there's no question from the yeah. header that you have up top to the yeah. titles of all your videos of what your target audience is. And yeah. then I take a look at uh, 
at the things you're doing. I, as a guy that lives in Fargo, North Dakota, why do I care about Southeast Calgary's best and worst neighborhoods and crime rates revealed? I don't. So that means you have a very clear, what Sharon, the president of real uh, has taught us as well is he says, you have to have a dog whistle and you have to speak to a very specific group of people. And you've determined your dog whistle. And now you've just created video upon video upon video and you're getting an insane amount of hits. Look, 74K, 72K, 54K. And although the 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 count matters for our ego, you're actually cashing checks now to the point yeah. in which this has become standalone, one of the most respected businesses in all of real estate. And, and it's taken years to get here, but I want you to give us a peek behind the curtain. And I'm here as a student to learn. I'm not going to interrupt your uh, your flow of where you want to go, but I'm going to ask a bunch of questions to try to yeah. exasperate more knowledge for myself and my team. Yeah. Um, and I do encourage if you're, if you're watching this live, like, and you can, does everyone have chat? Yeah. I see a few chats in there already. So if you have chat, like say hi, like, jump in there. Uh, I do want to, I want to interact and and I will kind of scan it. Um, I am multitaskable, but that's not even a thing. So the, the thing to validate it is, um, is since January, 2020, um, we've seen 2.1 million views of our videos. We've had a hundred over 142,000 uh, hours watched of our videos and we've seen uh, over 2.7 million in gross commissions to the team. And so it's, um, and, I, and I say that with a lot of humility because it's not just me doing it. There's a, a huge, there's a, there's a lot of us that are putting efforts into this. Like mm-hmm. I say to the team all the time, like I can't do what I love doing without them being able to do what they love doing. And they need to be there to help those people who are reaching out to us because and I'll get into it, but there's a lot of trust that happens through video uh, very organically. And um, and so it's it's a great thing. So um, so part of our journey was, uh, and, and it doesn't happen overnight, right? So in 2019 uh, was when we actually rolled out. If you go to back to some of the older videos and you see some of the background where it's more blue in the background um, uh, with like a bookshelf, that was like, I called it my duct tape studio and we still use it. Um, uh, but it it really was like me learning how to do this. And I think the number one thing, if you're going to do video is to fall in love with the process. Don't be attached to what the outcome is. Don't be attached to the money. Don't be attached to the leads. I have one goal in all of this, uh, is to provide more opportunities and higher quality opportunities for my team than I could uh, any other way. And that ultimately is truly my biggest goal with this. And so um, leaning into that is going to be the number one thing uh, for you to do. But in 20, so we started that in 2019. And if you go through um, here, let me, let me do this really quick. As you pull that up, Jared, I I just want to point out that when a lead comes in from something like YouTube, uh, that is... uh, that is like the lowest hanging fruit that you can possibly have. Uh, that is somebody yeah. who already feels like they're in a relationship with you and they're yeah. not interviewing you. They've already said, you're the, you're the realtor for me. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. And, and actually it's quite overwhelming looking at all these videos <laughs> scrolling through and the amount of hours trying to figure thumbnails and you can see progressions, you can see things come in. Um, but like, like a lot of this stuff, I mean, like here, so if you can see a quick, talking head. I mean, that's one of our team's agents. And we were sitting in the studio, uh, like it was doing interview style. You can kind of see little, little talking heads there, but um, it was doing interviews. It was trying everything. I mean, some of these videos have 35 views, 95 views, 287 views, 490 views. And that was only two years ago. And whenever you're like a lot of us, whenever you're trying to continue to grow and to continue to um, become bigger or better at something, your ceiling and your foundation level should always be increasing. And so what I mean by that is when I look at videos that I'm putting out now, and if any of you uh, are doing videos uh, through YouTube, you will know that um, that always gives you a score. 
what video is this out of the last 10? Is it one out of 10? Is it 10 out of 10? Mm -hmm. And videos like the last one that went out this weekend, um, that Southeast community video, it was a nine out of 10, but it had 1700 views in four days and it will grow slowly, but that's a long organic play type video that people will search for a very long time. And so there's a lot of um, strategies when it comes into it. And so in 2019, we rolled out that studio. We just kept doing content. It wasn't as consistent, but we tried to do one a week. Um, in 2021, we saw about 350,000 GCI come in um, from from those videos. 2022. And Jared, what's, what's your price point for, uh, for homes? Yeah. So our average price... Benchmark price is about 600 right now. We've increased a ton because everyone from Toronto and Vancouver is moving here. And that actually has been a big part of uh, us attracting. I think Mm -hmm. we would have, um, excuse my French, even though it's not French, one of the shittiest years we possibly would have ever had if we didn't have YouTube leads um, Mm -hmm. this year. I can guarantee it. So, um, but 2022. And and I just, I want to, I want to validate for just a moment one of the unique things is, is if you buy a lead, whether it be a yeah. Zillow lead or a realtor.com lead or anything else, that is that is like a one and done expensive one-time purchase with the hopes that that'll convert. Uh, you post on social media and the audience, only about 10% of your audience actually hears it uh, and, and sees yeah. it. And that's quickly gone the next moment. YouTube yeah. is a search engine in which yeah. content will last there for as long as YouTube is up and running. And yeah. so it now becomes not the work that you do once, but it is this compounded effort. You said 1700 yeah. views in four days. Most people are envious of that, but that video will end with 10,000 views at, uh, in, in a couple of years because that many people yeah. have oh, yeah. thought yeah. that out that exact yeah. information that you're providing. Yeah. So there's yeah. just such inherent value in spending the time to master this craft. And yeah. Jared, you're talking about the money you're making right now. I bet you could stop producing today. And yeah. this database of videos and this this library of content will produce for you millions of dollars of GCI over the next few years. It probably would. And I think there's another layer to it that I don't think anyone is talking about, but I'll save that to the end. Because I think that's where the real money is actually made. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's what you do after the videos are made. And so I'll share a little bit of that at the end. But but I think this is the first step. Uh, But there is something after that. So um, but I would say like the thing for us and where what we got frustrated with is um, it was initially getting tired of purchasing ads or purchasing leads. Sorry. And so we got super tired of that, like you said, Uh, but then we ended up moving into more organic leads. And so we started going, hey, you know what? We wanna start SEOing our website. We wanna start chasing down leads and we haven't stopped that, but Google's algorithms are so frustrating when you're trying to organically rank a website. And so we built one little button. It tanked our traffic in a month from almost 100,000 single users coming to our website in a month tanked it down to 50,000. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, I was like, I am done. I am not leaving this in the hands of a developer and Google's algorithms for search engine. I am going to start doing something and creating something to figure this out. And that was really the catalyst to like, say, it's always from pain for me. <laughs> it's like something bad happens and we got to figure out a different way. And, uh, and so I think the the purpose for yourself, you have to know what that purpose is uh, in, in creating a channel. And I think the biggest thing, if you haven't heard it before, is know, like, and trust. Um, this is something we use in all of our marketing and, and the behind the scenes is people need to know who you are and uh, and then like who you are, and then they're going to trust you. The, the what What most agents do is they trust, they jump to trust first and they try to give their knowledge and their experience they tried to like like almost like data dump on people and it's gross and it's like it's it, it instead of trying to build a no like and trust the people that are showing up on our doorstep uh, and who are emailing in and literally could wait a week for my response in an email because they know, like, and trust me from videos and they will trust whoever I connect them with on our team. Um, Those people have built a relationship with me because they know who we are, know who I am, they like us and they trust us. Like 
Um, I mean, I get recognized going into coffee shops and people being like, hey, you like I walked out of the office with Rebecca the other day. Um, and uh, and and this guy <laughs> yells out a window of his car. He's like, hey, you're the guy from YouTube. Hey, I'm so excited. I'm good to see you like out and about and blah, blah, blah. And I actually yelled back. I'm like, yeah, I've seen you on YouTube, too. And he's like, you you have? I'm like, no, no, just kidding. Anyways, but but it was like, but this stuff is happening. And yeah. I don't do it for that. It actually bugs me and it actually makes me feel Yeah, you're you're not trying to be a celebrity. You're I'm not trying, trying to, to be, be a celebrity. You're trying to be a steward to your team. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Jared, I want I wanna I wanna hang on what you said because I loved it, the no like and trust portion. Yeah. And you said that immediately agents try to jump to the trust part of that. Mm -hmm. They need to hang on the no part. We can't control the like part, but we need to hang on the no part. What yes. are one, two, or three things that we should be doing in order to get people to know us? Hmm. Be extremely consistent at whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So whatever the marketing is, whether it's an Instagram, whether it's shorts uh, on YouTube, or whether it's reels or um, whether it's you writing blog posts, um, I don't care what it is. It, it's consistency. Um, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so consistency you for years, when, when did you start doing videos, Jared? Well, let me show you something. Let me Cause, show cause you. Something. I just, as, as yeah. you, as you pull that up, uh, here's the point I'm trying to get at. You said, yeah. uh, in like even 2019, you were getting videos that had 30, 50, 70, a hundred views. Um, yep. but you remain consistent with that yep. process because I loved the process of making videos and I knew it would work. I know I'm a likable person. I'm an introvert. Um, but if it's just between me and a camera, um, I can, I can do that. And so it's just, I don't know, it was me, but this is, um, let me share this. Can you guys all see that? You can give me a quick yes or no or whatever. Yes. You should be able to hear it too. Um, this is the video in thinking through going, doing this with you, Eric, this is the video tw you actually can't find it on YouTube. I took it off, <laughs> but 12 years ago, is that 12 you? years ago, I made this video and I was still doing videos back then too. It was like shooting some stuff in your car, driving around and, and it was super random and awful, horrible. Um, but Chamberlain with Chamberlain group and the Royal LePage Foothill. I want to talk to you today about a great... There's so many mistakes that I make in this video. Now knowing what I know, I'm actually disturbed watching this. But this video, what happened was, it was me talking about a condo complex that was being built in Varsity, which is a community in Calgary. And this is probably the first video that we actually got leads from. So a guy watched this. He wasn't moving there, but he was like, oh, this seems trustworthy. So we ended up doing two or three transactions. We sold another place of his and his fiance's, and then they ended up buying from a builder. We weren't a part of that, but, um, but it was the first video that I remember thinking backwards and I look backwards and I go, why did I stop? Like, why did I stop 12 years ago? Cause sheesh, like, where would I be now? Uh, if, if we didn't stop. And so I think when you ask that question, this is my this is my reminder, and that's a horrible pose. Let's actually find something a little more decent. There we go. Um, and so that's not any better. That, that's better. It. That's that's the I'm better face. Off. I'm taking it off. <laughs> that's not better. <laughs> um, and so, uh, uh, and actually, number two, you have to laugh at yourself. Like, get rid of, and and don't be serious. Like, I have tried to be so serious in my life for so long, and I've realized that. Um, like have fun with it. Surround yourself with people who enjoy it, who have fun with it. Well, that, uh, that plays into the, yeah. the like portion, right? Not only yeah. liking yourself, yep. but people, people who are self-aware enough to understand that they're not robotic and perfectionistic. I like, yeah, Jared, Jared, there's, there's so many people watching right now that are saying, yeah, but like, I don't like the way in which I sound. I don't like how I appear on camera. I don't like my cadence. I don't like my third chin. People are saying all of these narratives to themselves yeah. of why they shouldn't, but you declared you're an introvert. And yeah. so you instead fell in love with the process. Yeah. How'd you, how'd you get over yourself to actually start to do this? Because I get to play with cool tools like this. <laughs> like uh, I'm, I'm honestly like a nerd at heart. 
Um, and I, I, I there, I, I mean, I could go very vulnerable and tell you everything that I don't like about what I see on the screen right now. And I could sit here and rip myself apart, but how does that help me? How does that help my family? How does that help my team? How does that put me in a place of, of um, being the leader that I truly believe that I'm entrusted to be? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the irony of being a leader and all of us probably watching are like this. No one hired us for this role. Like nobody. Like we all kind of are self-proclaimed leaders. <laughs> like we we're and and I and I don't I mean you know who says this quote, but I don't remember. Um, you know, to see if you are truly a leader, look behind you and who's following you. There's something, some version of that. Otherwise, you're just going for a walk, right? If if, yeah, if, something, yeah. if you think you're yeah. a leader and nobody's following you, you're just out for a walk. That's right. Yeah. And and I always think about that. And I still don't feel like I'm a great leader. But I have to put myself kind of to the side and know where I'm trying to go and just continue to keep going like it. Like my current business coach, he said, he's like, you're just a workhorse. You just kind of keep going. And in this phase of life, you need to learn how to have fun more. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, that's probably true. (laughs) That'll be my So what I'm hearing you say, Jared, is when your mission and your vision are clear Yep. Everything else in the way is just an excuse. Totally. Okay. Yeah. And the irony is, is people already see you like worse than you're going to be on video. People hear your voice in a less formatted way than they're going to see you on video. Like you're already giving a worse version of yourself um, in real life than you oh. are after the editing process of a video. Yeah. I never thought of that before, but that's very true, <laughs> right? It's a little bit depressing, but I... It is depressing <laughs> because we're not all we're not all so thought through in real uh-huh. life. Like when you're sitting with a and, client... And they, and they afford us grace. The, the, here, here's a truth to it. The haters will amplify yeah. and the followers will, will multiply. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's like a bumper um, sticker waiting to happen. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Someone make it, send it to us. Um, but I think it's, uh, and I think what's really cool is like you said, the followers that, that multiply, I think not only are they followers, you start to have fans, like people Mm -hmm. know stuff about me. Um, I've had people when I, when they end up recognizing me talking about which car I was driving, because they want to know who I am now. And I find that creepy, but it's actually kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I drove inside my wife's car once and we shot inside the video. And I had two people over the the next year be like, hey, you guys, you guys have like an Audi. It looks like an SQ5, right? I'm like, yeah, that was my wife's car. (laughs) Like We did do a video like I was talking while I was driving. And how did you know that? Like, so so people are watching that stuff and people want to they want to get to know you. Yeah. And so I think um, just allowing yourself to be gracious uh, to yourself and humble and patient um, because you could do it. Uh, anyone, I feel like if I can do it. <laughs> so I keep looking over here. Molly is our video lady, a uh, gal. She just started. Um, here's Molly. Hey, Molly. <laughs> uh, so I feel like I have to include her sometimes when I'm talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure I'm glad you just put Molly in the corner and said, watch the master at work. How That's great, right. Jared. I, I the- here's, here's what I want to do because uh, I want the people watching this and engaging. I want them to be able to say, I can do what Jared has done. And we talked a lot about the mindset of yep. this, right? The mindset that we have to fall in love with the process or the process depends on where you're from. But number one, to fall in love with that, uh, to concentrate on know, like, and trust, right? You need to be known and consistent with it. Uh, don't take yourself too serious. That's how you'll be more liked. Uh, and then to really figure out who are you speaking to and to compound on that with massive cadence. But Jared, yeah. how, how do we get from the person that's 12 years ago, 10 years ago, made a really uh, bad video in their vehicle to now putting out something that is capturing millions of dollars of GCI annually? How do we get there? Okay. So one day at a time, um, I'm, I'm going to say there's a handful of things you need to know. The, the first one is 
I watch a lot of, I watch a ton of YouTube. I, I really enjoy the process of watching how others create stuff. And I've watched a lot of agents and you have to, as an agent, you have to go down one or two paths. I believe there's two different types of audiences when it comes to real estate uh, content that people are watching. Actually three, I'm going to make a new one here. Uh, the first one is your like fear, full on everything's ending no matter what type of market we're in. There's those types of individuals and people who are conspiracy theorists, like that's one type of YouTube watcher for real estate. The second one is your sexy house listings, right? It's it's the um it's all of the um it's all of the 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 you know the sexy houses, the high end listings and that kind of stuff. And the third one is your sorry, now I'm seeing chats and I'm going to close them because it bugging I'll, me. There I'll, we go. I'll ask the question when the time comes. Yeah, I yeah. see your editing question. I see it. We'll talk about it. Um and then the third Fear, one sexy houses and what's the third? And education and so the last one is education. And so those are the three truly different types of real estate channels. And a lot of times the fear one. When, when is you like say fear, based. I want to live there for a second. Are you talking the news? Yeah, yeah news. Um, like the economy is this. The the people are leaving this state or province and going here and, and where it's all ending. And da, 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 clickbait. Da, right? Total clickbait, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so, and a lot of times you, the other part of that too is, um, is figure out your niche of like where you are wanting to do this. Because uh, I, I personally know a bunch of people that do a lot of video stuff for real estate in the US and Canada, and some of them do countrywide. So the, the whole US, the whole of Canada. But then I've also talked to those people because they're trying to do this Canadian content, this American content. And they're like, I'm not getting any leads. No one's like calling me for like my city. And I'm like, clearly I can see why, because you're not talking about your city. Mm -hmm. And so if that's what you're wanting, then you have to go after those people and you have to know who your audience is. If you are trying to build something like a referral business where you want to send out stuff to anybody and everybody across the country or a state, then talk about that. But you have to know what it, your end goal is. And for me, it is high quality opportunities for my team. That's it. If I start talking about other provinces or other countries, that's not going to give me that. So yeah, that's a big part uh, let of me, that. Let me, uh, I, I want to put uh, a memorable phrase around that. Uh, and uh, this is, again, this comes from Sharon, the president of Real, who we have the privilege of following. And he told me a couple of weeks ago in a conversation, he said, Eric, the riches are in the niches. Yeah. That the riches are in the niches. The more specific we can get, the more fruit will actually come from that. And I said, I also know that uh, snitches get stitches, but 100%. the riches are in the niches. And, and so- uh, I hope that becomes a memorable phrase for you because uh, encapsulating everything that you're saying, Jared, your niche or niche is education yep. and your specific niche or niche is Calgary. Yep. If you get drilled down um, tighter than that, you're still, you're not going to be effective. So you have to, if you get too niched, niched, whatever, down, um, you know, tomato, tomato, if you're going to get too specific in what you're talking about. So if I talk only about three communities in my city, that's not going to help me either. So you have to have a broad enough approach, but that is very specific to knowing what you want. So if it's San Diego and you only talk about this little pocket of San Diego versus the city of San Diego, it's not going to be as effective. You're not, you're not going to, people aren't going to watch that. They're only going to be watching you for those three topics. And then how are you going to create content around that? Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to have enough material to actually start doing it too. Right. So, yeah. All right. So the, the question at hand that we're still diving into is how do we become you? How do, how do we create this? And the first thing you said is we really have to know our audience, right? Yeah, uh, is it audience. a fear-based audience? Is it sexy houses? Is it education? Uh, what are we speaking to in specific niches? Yeah. And whichever one you go down, live and die by it. Uh, the reason is because if you go down the sexy house route, um, or you go down the uh, education route, um, they're completely different audiences. And you cannot do both on the same channel um, to a high level. You can do it. 
but audio, but YouTube is going to the algorithms inside of YouTube are going to uh, search for your audience, and if you keep feeding it different types of content, it doesn't know who to send it to, so it's just not going to send it to anybody. Mm. So, for example, when you showed the our page, um, when you showed our, uh, let me show this really quickly, and I'm gonna like go behind the scenes here and show you stuff. So, if I go to our most popular videos, um. This top row of videos all have 50,000 or more views. Toronto to Calgary, um, that was organic. There was no ads attached to that. Five reasons why Calgary is not for you, essentially. Completely organic. We love you, Calgary. That was me just screwing around eight, eight years ago with my drone, and it got caught by the Huffington Post. So it jumped 50,000 views in a day or something like that. So totally by chance. Mm -hmm. This one here, a sexy house thing. I feel like I'm contradicting what I'm saying, but 74,000 views on that video. Do you know how many views I paid for, for that video? Mm -hmm. Probably 73 of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And how many leads did I get from that? None. How many leads did I get from this? I can't even count, honestly. How many from this one? I couldn't even count. So. I've tried it. And, and even this hottest, you go down this line, any of these sexy houses, there's only two on here. I've had to pay for those views because I knew the audience wasn't going to do it, but I wanted to try. I wanted to figure it out. And so now. Well, and, and wouldn't you say yeah. it's okay to uh, Gary V talks about jab, 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 hook. It, I mean, yeah. isn't it okay to occasionally give them something that's unexpected? But do it in your niche. Okay. So do like do do it inside your niche. Do the ask. So do the ask in the video. The thing unexpected might be you saying, I'm an agent. And if you're thinking of moving here, like come ask because I'm giving so much content. I'm giving so much value. I'm offering so much when you watch the videos. Um, I have a hard time saying, use us as an agent. But because we've actually had uh, the last year or two, it hasn't been that. But before it was that a problem and people would watch us thinking we were just an educational channel. But it wasn't until I started the jab part of that, asking for people to reach out or giving them a platform to reach out or a way to reach out that was easy. Um, that's when we started seeing things happen from that, too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And I think like like you said, like how to be me, I mean. That's a weird question to answer because <laughs> sometimes I don't want to be me. How, how to, how, let's, let, let's change it then. How do we how find to do the, video. the success that you've had? Yeah. So I think the other part too is uh, knowing the types of videos. So types of videos to create. So let me, I'm just going to, is seeing the screen helpful for everyone? You can just put in the comments if it is. I will open the chat to see it. Um, and so if you kind of look through our content now, you're going to see a rhythm. You're going to see, um, actually, if you want to read a great book, um, it's, uh, oh, I don't have it down here. It's called The YouTube Formula. Um, Daryl Eves is who I've learned some of this stuff from. So if, if you want an introduction to their stuff, just reach out to me and I can do that for you. But, um, but there's a rhythm to my madness. It's not just random. It's not, uh, it, it, there are, we, they call it buckets. They call it themes, whatever you want to call them. But there are things. So you can see this video has a buying theme. Um, and if you go backwards enough, you'll see another buying theme. If you go backwards even a little bit further, not too far, you're going to see another buying theme, which is right down here. And so um, you're going to see a market update theme. You're going to see... You're going to see these rhythms um, and you're going to see buckets, uh, essentially. And I think that's a huge thing to learn is to knowing what to talk about. And for those that are trying to figure out what do I talk about, one of the things I think we did that was probably a huge part of our success was this whole playlist. What is the best neighborhood in Calgary? And this playlist, I mean, we shot them a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. Um, 
and a lot of them 10,000, 19,000, 10,000, 17,000, 3,000, 8,000, 14, 26, 31, 6,200, 16,000, 20, like, like these videos, um, I truly believe are a foundation of our channel because it gives people, um, and how we figured out what content to shoot is I actually went on the back end of our website and I said, what are people organically looking for in our city and what are the most visited community pages? And that's how I started this. Uh, and that was three years ago. Yeah, and then it, I isn't, the, isn't it fair to say, one. Jared, that we can figure out how to create the video people want by simply Googling what's currently being searched, not only Googling it, but checking out the back end of your own website. Yes. Yeah. I would say if you have the data, then use your own data. Um, the other way you could do it is if you're doing a Google search using a tool like Keywords Everywhere, uh, it'll tell you the search traffic on a monthly level. So you could start searching your communities inside of your city and getting a sense of which ones have the most monthly search. Um, and then going that way. That's another way if you don't have your own data from a website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so again, it's kind of the topics. What are you talking about? So um, we, we always, every, I don't know, fourth or fifth video, we're always doing a neighborhood or a community something. We have a market updates. We have something about buying. We'll have certain videos and we're always testing something. Right now, affordability is a huge topic. So we did a video um last week that uh, google grabbed it and organically ranked it and two weeks ago it's at thirty six thousand views and so um that was i mean actually it's shot in right here in the sexy version not this <laughs> all the lights on version <laughs> um but it it it, it kind of took off and it got a lot of traction and there's a lot of people reaching out for it mm -hmm. the other thing is I'm always offering PDFs or downloads or guides. Every month we create our own market report. Uh, a lot of these videos, uh, I have a moving to Calgary guide because there's a lot of people moving here right now. And um, I can't even imagine the number, but for the last four months, I've probably had at least one to three people a day reaching out saying, hey, can I get that moving to Calgary guide? Uh, mm -hmm. because, and I actually did it at the very end of the video. So if you watch any of these moving from to Calgary videos, uh, it wasn't until the very end. I didn't put it up front. I actually said at the very end for those that are, um, that are still watching this and are really serious about moving here, um, email me, email me, put in the mm -hmm. subject, moving to Calgary, I'm going to get it and I'll respond and I'll send it to you. All right. And Yeah. Are you, cause I, I think this is so valuable. And one of our, one of our watchers is asking if you would share a sample of your moving to Calgary guide, if, if you'd uh, screen share that, that'd be really helpful. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Are, are you in your video creating any calls to action outside of pointing people to uh, get free stuff from you? A free download, a free PDF, a free, whatever. Say that again. Sorry. I was typing. Sorry. I didn't. Uh, are, are you, are you saying, Hey, sign up here to look at houses. Are you declaring yourself even as a realtor or are you just providing all of these resources where it subtly mentions that you're in real estate? Um, probably more the resources. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you'll mention it, but it's, I, I'd really, I, I want people to like me. And if yeah. they know I'm a realtor, but, uh, that, that's so huge because I don't know. Here, here's what, here's what some limited, people want to do, Jared. Some people want to create a video and be like, listen, if you want to buy here in Calgary, you yeah. got to contact me today. Like, I think that totally. is, that is repulsively like turn people off. Horrible. If you sound like a say, if, if put it this way, if someone sells me on something, I have hung up on them. <laughs> if someone sells you on anything, you will just get turned off because you're feeling manipulated. Yeah. But if someone gets to know who I am, they like what I'm doing and who I am and what I say, they're going to trust me. And so that's the process. It's the long game that I'm going for. I'm not trying to play the sleazy quick game because there is no quick game. And so this is an example of the PDF. So um, 
it'll look somewhat familiar to the PDF you'll get later because this is actually the PDF I quickly repurposed into the one that I'm going to give you all later. Um, but it's because uh, I honestly had 20 minutes to do it. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so this is like our moving rent. So we just did a ton of research. Our virtual assistants did a lot of research, got them to throw this together with links. Um, and so it's just kind of a, a guide that we use that way. So I, I want to be clear. You make great videos about yep. education because you figured out you're the education guy in Calgary. Yeah. Once you've done that, uh, you then know what you're going to make videos on because you're listening to what your website searches, as well as some people with Google, if they don't have those website searches, you're figuring out what to make content on. Yeah. You're then making content that folks, if you watch Jared's stuff, it's not, uh, amazing cuts and four different camera angles and all these things. It's more conversational yeah. uh, than it is super refined. And then yeah. your call to action for all these people, knowing that they're not signing up on your website to watch your video, your call mm -hmm. to action is if you want a free giveaway, then you're yep. capturing their email address. Yes. Yep. When, when they're getting that 100%. free giveaway. So you're sending them 100%. to a landing page or to email you or anything else. And you're never blasting. I'm Jared, the realtor. You're instead, I'm the guy who's going to educate you about Calgary. Yeah. So this is like the landing page for our basic moving up guide. So fairly straightforward. It has links to all the different types of guides that we have, how to write a letter to a seller, uh, biggest mistakes on moving up. The cool part too, is I've actually attracted agents inside of our city who are also always downloading our stuff. And I tell our team right now, um, your competition in the city, if you don't watch our stuff, is learning from me. So you need to also be watching what I'm doing because the amount of times our agents have gone into show homes or talk to other agents, and it's given them um, a whole different perspective and authority in our city uh, because we're known. And they walk into show homes, and, and I've heard so many times, like, yeah, every week we know it's coming out on Sunday. So on Monday we have a, a lunch and we watch the videos as the sales team in like this show home. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like it's, it's humbling and um, pretty crazy that it's working this way. So. Uh, Jared, yeah. we're going to, we're going to run out of time here quicker than totally. we know. I want you to hit us with the things that everybody needs to know. And gang, at the end of this, there's going to be a call to action uh, where Jared's going to give you his entire blueprint of what he's done. He worked hard to, to put it together just so we as this viewing audience can capture these things. So Jared, thank you for that. But I want you to yeah. take the next five to 10 minutes and just give us a barrage of the things that we need to do if we want to have success similar to yours. Okay, so a lot of people get caught up in how to shoot. They get caught up in the tools and I did too. Uh, what do you need? Like I don't have the materials. I don't have the cameras. I don't have the gear. Well, let's be honest. Like if you, even if you just have the new iPhone, this thing, Molly is more excited about this phone than this probably, I don't know how much is this set up? Four grand. <laughs> like it's, it's incredible what even just this new iPhone can do. And so don't get caught up on the technology and, and having the right things, just start doing it. Uh, and so get yourself a simple, you know, gimbal or something that you can put your phone up, uh, go out, start shooting. Um, just, just start doing those things. I think that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. Fall in love with what it is. Uh, every time you shoot, you should get better. Uh, fall in love with making good audio. Because if you don't have good audio, the visuals don't matter. And you have to make sure that you have that. So that's actually, I would yeah, invest. You, you, told, you told me, Jared, people uh, people will turn you off immediately if they can't hear you. But if the graphics uh, aren't great, or if the blurry, if it's a little bit blurry or faded, yep. people will give that grace, but they don't give audio grace. Absolutely. They'll for, they'll forgive you uh, if, if, if it looks a little bit off. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or I have weird cords in the bottom of the screen down here. Like they don't care. They're going to be okay with that. But if they can't hear what I'm saying, then that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. um, lighting. Um, if you are doing a studio thing, um, I actually just found this one and it's fantastic. Uh, I'll have links in the PDF and stuff, but like, it's a very simple light um, that I've I actually turned it. I'm not using it right now. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic light that you can just kind of use. 
Um, Jared, Jared, I want to be so crystal clear yeah. with people because as we were conversing in preparation for our time together, you had said, well, what do people want to know? And I said, so many yeah. people are going to try to s- s- look at Picasso and figure out what paints he uses and what paint brushes uh, and the canvas. And they think that if they get those things, they'll then yeah. be like Picasso. And yeah. it's far better to say, what are your habits? What is your mindset? Yeah. What are the must haves uh, in order to execute? Because even without the right tools, you're still going to be effective and successful. So folks, yeah. what Jared's giving you here in terms of making sure you have these things right, these are fundamental pieces. Uh, but even with just your iPhone, you're still going to have way more success if you do everything else that he says, don't go and spend 4,000 bucks yet. No. Just get get reg- regularly in the rhythm yeah. of putting out. And I'm, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. But the two things that I do want to share is is good lighting and whether it's outside or inside. That's super important. And if you're gonna invest in any type of audio, this little DJI mic set uh, is the best because you can connect it to your phone. And what you can, it'll upgrade to use on our cameras. This is what we use every single time. And so there's certain tools that you can invest in that are going to make a difference. Um, But more importantly than any of that is your video topics, your video structure, how you're doing things, and then the editing. And so if you're not good at editing, that is a skill you'll want to learn at first. And the reason I say you'll want to learn and you'll want to get dirty with it is because it gives you the knowledge to speak an editor's language and understanding of how to guide somebody else in the future. Because if I don't didn't know the basics, I wouldn't be able to say to an editor, I don't like that, I don't like this, can we switch this, can we make this, color grading this, and blah, 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 blah. But if I don't know those basics, it's gonna make future communication to an actual person that you've hired really, really difficult. So learn a system, whether, I mean, I would stay away from iMovie, uh, but if that's what you have, then use it, learn that. Then upgrade to something like Final Cut, uh, Pro, uh, Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve. There's lots of great tools out there. There's even AI stuff that you can start using. Don't rely on it. It's not at that level yet. Um, but once you have those video structures, the how you say the video, knowing I encourage you actually go watch some of our videos from three years ago, two years ago, and then come watch the most recent ones. You're going to see a drastic difference. We don't do an intro. We don't do like, hey, we're so-and-so from here and here's our little music. And now 38 seconds in, I think you're wanting to learn about Calgary. Like we don't do that anymore. Like I keep our intros so tight because we have to give them the meat. So, um, So it's learning all of those things are super important. But once you have all of that sorted out, it's what you do afterwards and retargeting these people with ads and video ads and pushing them to your website, introducing them in other places. That is actually where the real money is because I've talked to many other creators who are doing real estate who are making a tenth, you know, a third of what we're making um, with more views on their stuff than what we have. So there's, there's other things involved in this, but this is the first step. So Jared, that that's the cliffhanger that you gave us, uh, about a half hour ago, as you said, you're going to share with us a way in which you are, you are now really maximizing and monetizing. So doing it and creating the stuff matters a lot, but then creating the retargeting and, uh, adding those people, uh, to your campaigns and making sure that you stay front of mind for them. Uh, absolutely makes we, great sense. We do not pay for a single cold ad, period. I only pay for ads that people already at least know us. Mm. So take that however you may, but that is that is truly, I think, the secret behind it all. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, there's a couple of questions coming in the chat yeah. about editing. Okay. okay. How do people, how do people learn to edit? I mean, is that something that they can go onto YouTube? Are there tutorials yeah. and that sort? Yeah. So um, if you just search whatever program you have or you're using and just, just start watching tutorials. Um, there are some large channels out there with editing uh, and they're all great. Like uh, honestly use the tool that you're going to be presenting on to learn everything 
Like that's the crazy part because then you're going to start seeing how other people also are editing their videos. Um, watch other people in other cities who are doing things that are similar to you because then you're going to start noticing, hey, wait a minute, they did cut, do a cut here. They didn't say this. Something that I would have said, they said it way earlier or way later. They never said it. Uh, and start just being a student of, of YouTube and watching others. And it doesn't have to be real estate. Watch other stuff because there's so many incredible channels out there um that it's yeah start watching what you love i love cars i like i love car videos all that stuff so i've learned a lot of the things that the hooks that people are saying how short are they uh and and it's i've learned some of that from just watching and consuming and i think that's a big part of it so great uh we have somebody asking where do you store your videos jared in my pocket no uh we just use google drive right now so yeah i i think that so many people have a tendency in this to overthink it and they're striving for perfection the message i've heard loud and clear today is fall in love with the process it's not going to be perfect right away uh oh. and and uh, don't let inaction be your action you got to get out there and, and start creating a yeah. cadence uh, yeah. of connection Jared, you have promised to give away for folks uh, in a complete and total guide, a blueprint, a, a roadmap of sorts of how they can win uh, with this from the camera yeah. to, to use, to the lighting, to uh, the time blocking, to everything else. I've seen what you put together. It is hubba hubba gorgeous stuff. Uh, <laughs> and they can go to videocreatorcourse.ca, right? Yeah. For so, videocreatorcourse.ca. Yeah, sorry, everybody. That was the URL I had quickly. Uh, and 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 to be honest, like I'm not creating a video course right now. Uh, why I'm sending you this to the URL, it just will take you to a quick uh, Google form. Fill it out and I will send you guys uh, some information. I'll send you the PDF. It'll come from me. So if you have questions, you can just eat, reach out to me directly. Um, I am in the future. I'm always, I think there's a huge gap in terms of educating um, sales uh, service-based businesses around this exact thing. It doesn't have to be real estate. It could be whatever a sales-based business where you have uh, people behind you um, who need high quality leads. And I think there's a huge gap um, there because I couldn't find it when I'm trying to create this. And I think there's uh, some great opportunities uh, to have an incredible business um, if this is a type of marketing that you want to fall in love with. Mm -hmm. uh, I taught a class and I'm going to, I'm going to end on this and then I'll give yeah. you final thoughts, Jared. Uh, I taught a class <clears> earlier <throat> today for some new agents in the Fargo area. And so we had about a dozen agents that were there. And I really identify that there's, there's only three types of realtors that are going to exist in the upcoming years. As mm. we continue to see uh, things change and evolve uh, the realtor who has a huge sphere and a whole bunch of past clients, they're always going to have a place in this industry because totally. they have relationship capital that is impenetrable. Uh, they've served people consistently and exceedingly well. The second is somebody who joins a team because joining a team, I think, is the way in which you're going to survive both as a new agent and even as an existing agent because the cost to do business like this and the ability to get the reach that you have, Jared, the leverage that you have, and the business that you can bring to people, they're not going to be able to forge their way on their own. No. The third, and, and this is really what you talked about, is the person who is going to develop a reputation business that is bigger than their authentic reach. Mm -hmm. And that reputation business is living on YouTube. I think that it can live in some Google reviews. I think that it can live somewhat on traditional yeah. social media. However, I think that the greatest tool in which for somebody to stand the test of time is YouTube and video. And you are at the forefront of that, Jared. People are going to be chasing you, trying to catch up, and you're consistently going to be a few steps ahead. And that's why your business is pretty bulletproof right now. Yeah, oh, I appreciate that. I think the the final thought that I have is um, use my errors and don't try to do this on multiple platforms. Uh, focus on YouTube. Don't try to do it on Facebook. Don't try to do it on Instagram. Don't try to do all the extra things. Fall in love with the process and then uh, branch out from there. And, uh, and, and truthfully, YouTube has changed our life, changed our business. Um, it has given us a platform that took us nearly 20 years 
of trying to figure out stuff <laughs> and building a team. Um, and it's, um, yeah, I, I, I just owe it all to consistency and the platform. So it's, it's been really, really cool. Hmm. Well, Jared, uh, I love it. Uh, Sherry, one of our viewers was nice enough to say that we are doppelgangers and she got a lot out of today. Uh, you, <laughs> you gave something away, uh, at video creator course.ca. I want to give something away as well. This is a copy of the book. My partner, Robbie T and I wrote It's called the perfect real estate agent blueprint. You need to go find me on Instagram, uh, at real Eric hatch. That's Eric with a K real Eric hatch. And just DM me the word blueprint, uh, from there. Uh, we'll give you instructions on how to get a free copy of our book. You just pay shipping and handling. Uh, this is a foundational piece in which to grow your real estate business. And Jared is showing us how to crush it as well. So it's a nice little one-two punch. Jared Chamberlain, the best looking bald-headed ginger man in all of Canada. Eric Hatch, also a bald-headed ginger man in America. Uh, great to be with you. God bless. And we'll catch you all on the flippity flip.